Hello everyone. Today I'm going to walk you through my config. Uh, I know that for the, a lot of you guys, you know how to do scripting, but you don't know how to read my config, or maybe you don't know how to do scripting and you're just lost altogether. Hopefully, watching this video will help you get an idea of what my config looks like and how to set it up for yourself. So if you go to my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash MrSlyn, you can go down here to whatever my description looks like that day and usually in the, in the description somewhere here you should find a link to my config download it and it'll come up with something that looks like this uh, this one's dated August 19th go into here you'll see a couple files this one is an overlay that you can upload into it's an overlay skin that you can use this is a readme file that I highly suggest that you read uh, with instructions on how to install my HUD and my config as long as a, as well as a change log and then you'll see two different folders, CFG and Slim Custom Stuff. The CFG folder actually typically belongs in the Custom Stuff folder. I just separate it because a lot of people accidentally install the CFG folder and you're not supposed to install it. The Custom Stuff folder is everything you should install in terms of getting my HUD, but the CFG folder actually controls all of your game settings and I don't want you to mess up your game setting. That's why I removed it from the folder. So, you, you've downloaded my HUD now and now you want to look at how to read my my uh, my config and how to install it yourself. So first step is to find your TF folder. It's under computer, your hard drive, program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, Team Fortress 2, TF. And you don't want to touch any of these folders here if you've never done this before. These are all folders that are default TF2 files that are downloaded from Steam Pipe. The only folder with anything different in it, I mean these these are these files all in here are just demo files if you have them. Uh, these are recordings of your game. In this folder is your downloads, and these have all the downloaded, you know, materials, models, sound, custom user sounds, etc., that you download from random servers that you join, as well as the custom maps that you'll download from any custom server. Uh, and then your custom folder. This is where you actually keep all of your own custom configs and settings, as well as your custom HUD. So you put, a, you make a folder within custom called whatever you want. Mine's called Slim Custom Stuff. That's the folder that you'll see right here. And once you go in here, you just drag and drop all of these files into that folder and you will install my HUD and my add-ons. And let me explain to you what I have here. So these two files here are Oxide HUD and PREC. These don't actually do anything at all. I just keep them in here for reference. Oxide HUD is my favorite HUD of all time and I don't want to lose it in case the website goes down for it. So I keep a folder of it at all times. And then PREC, same thing. Uh, I keep it on uh, on me at all times in case this, the website goes down. But uh, let me go through each of these folders real briefly. The add-ons folder has the three add-ons that I use: PREC, Spectator Tools, and Status Spec. PREC automatically records all of your games into the demo files that you'll see here, and that's why there's so many of them. Uh, you can look back at these files later on. They're just raw recordings of the game that you can use for your frag videos, or for if you're me, you make them for YouTube videos, etc., etc. Um, I also have status spec and spectator tools, and you can read more about this online, but they are awesome, awesome plugins that I use to see through walls and to label players, and to, they have just incredible functionality to them for demos and, and source TV. So uh, whenever you're in insecure mode, you can use these plugins to basically see through walls and, and all sorts of cool stuff. So I love these add-ons, uh, highly recommend using them. Your CFG folder has all of your config settings. Your materials folder, you might have one, you might not have one. This controls the materials actually for the, uh, actually for one of the add-ons that I mentioned up here. Then you have resource and scripts. These two folders control your custom HUD. And then the sound folder, which has all the custom sounds that you download on servers. It also has under the UI folder your hit sound if you use one. If you use the default hit sound, it's, it's okay, it sounds like a little bell. You can also download your own custom hit sound.wav or make your own custom hit sound and uh, put that under sound UI and you can use your own hit sound. Mine is a Quake 3 hit sound. I just like the sound of it. So now that we're done through that, let me walk you through my actual config. So you'll see a ton of different files under here and they all end in .cfg. So if you want to make your own config file, you simply open up a notepad file and save it as a .cfg under all files. Let me explain to you how these work. There's a lot of useless files in here that you're not going to ever use or, or know what they do. But autoexec is auto automatically run whenever your TF2 starts up. 
Then you also have ones that are called Demoman, Engineer, Medic, Pyro. These are class configs that are executed whenever you switch to that class. So using those configs, it's really, uh, it really easy to make it so that you bind certain commands to certain classes, or you always keep the same commands every time you start up your TF2. So if you look at my autoexec folder, real briefly at the top you'll see launch options. These are the launch options you use when you go to your library under Team Fortress 2 properties, set launch options. I use these launch options and I'll explain to you how they work. The You can either use full screen or windowed launch options based on your uh, your monitor dimensions. So mine's 1920 by 1080. So I use DX level 95, which is DirectX 9, full screen, uh, width of 1920, height of 1080. I open up console. It takes out that really annoying uh, valve sound at the, the the valve video at the beginning of your TF2 launch. And then these last three commands turn off mouse acceleration. They're pretty outdated right now. You don't even need them anymore, but I keep them in there just in case. Uh, if you're looking down here, uh, this one is for windowed mode, and then no border takes off the bordered uh, windowed mode. Now I have uh, my connect info, and a lot of people ask me this when I'm streaming, like how do you type surf into your console and automatically connect you to a server? Well, this is how you do it. You create an alias, so you alias surf, for example. It'll always connect to that server whenever I type surf in console. Uh, I also have connect info for random servers that I join for pugs, for uh, my mixes for random pubs that I like, MGE servers, DM servers, etc, etc. This one's really important here, it's a uh, dodgeball server in case you guys want to join me for that. You can also add in some extra commands there as well, so whenever I join a b-ball server, I connect to the server, I have a kill bind, and then I also drop the briefcase on mouse too. That's pretty useful. Uh, then my archon commands, which uh, you guys don't want to see. Uh, these are some random archon commands, when I actually uh, have the archon it'll just I can just type Badlands in console and it'll change my server to Badlands. Then I turn cheats on and I exact a bunch of different commands. For example, this one here will make sure that your your HUD is turned on. And, you know, you don't really need to know what most of these do, just uh, take a look at them if you actually know what they do. For example, this one disables the HTML, HTML message of the day. Uh, there's my key bindings that bind all my keys to random stuff. Uh, this one here is like a scoreboard bind, so if you want to, if you want to open up NetGraph when you open your scoreboard, or when you, if you want to output a specific timestamp for the for the amount of time left in the match, you can do that there. Uh, I have another thing called Lazy Jump, which binds my spacebar to jumping and ducking at the same time. Very useful. I have my PREX settings, my hit sound settings. Notice here, these are double slashes. That's called commenting out, which means that the game as it reads through it will not execute that command which is useful for labeling stuff so you'll see all the labels that I have hit sound settings for example this one uh, uses my quake 3 hit sound and then it also changes the pitch based on how much damage I'm doing so the higher uh, the lower the lower damage I do the higher the pitch and if I do a, a big meat shot it'll just give me a really low pitched uh, quake 3 hit sound which I really like I have my let out switcher so if I mash F1 through 4 when I'm in spawn, it'll actually change my loadout for me. Random voice generator, pendulum bind for trolling, a null movement script. This one uh, makes it so that way if I push two opposite directional keys, it won't freeze my character in one spot. It'll actually just allow me to continuously move, uh, which is kind of like cheating, but you know, it's legal. Uh, a ready script, sensitivity settings, random mouse settings, other settings I like for TF2, and then my uh, FPS config and I highly recommend that you use an FPS config no matter how good your computer is it's worth using an FPS config to take out a lot of the random clutter that you'll run into when you're when you're running the game and also using an FPS config will ensure that you keep the highest FPS possible at all times which is really good in terms of keeping your game consistent and then thus making you more consistent as a player uh, as far as FPS max goes uh, you can cap your FPS at a certain amount and definitely recommend reading this paragraph here and then setting your FPS max based on whatever's comfortable for your computer. I have a pretty base computer. I cap my FPS at 264. If your computer is not as good, you can cap it at 132. And then the lowest I would cap it at is 121, which is double your monitor refresh rate plus, plus one. So if you use a 60 hertz monitor, double it to 120 and then add one. Then you can uh, check out some net settings. I use the good, good connection and I choose to enable sprays and enable shadows because sometimes you can see through walls. 
I enable facial features because on kill cams, when I screenshot my game, I like to have eyeballs on my characters. I turn off ragdolls because when people die and their ragdolls still flying around, it's very distracting. Same thing with Gibbs. And then the graphical settings. Don't touch the graphical settings. Uh, for the most part, these are just a bunch of commands that you don't even care about at all. Uh, there's a couple things in here you can change if you actually want to read the commented parts there and then and, and tweak your game at that level. Uh, one that I would recommend looking at is mraw input, which affects the raw input command for your mouse uh, sensitivity. And then another one here is your threading, and this enables uh, the cores on your computer. So just you know, just check it out, read through it, and uh, yeah, that's the first thing. Okay. Do -do -do. Let's look at some of my class configs. So I'll start with Scout because it's the most straightforward. It starts with exec default config underscore high dot cfg. Basically, you can make as many config files as you'd like. And then if you want to exec all the commands within that file, you can just exec that, that file. So uh, default config underscore hide is my generic all class config. And I'll explain to you how this works. Uh, HUD achievement tracker is a HUD crosshair. Uh, you can actually, instead of using it, basically you can, you can use the, the custom crosshairs that are provided to you by Valve, but you can also draw one on the screen using HUD elements and create some really cool HUD crosshair effects. And then what you can also do is bind that HUD crosshair to the HUD achievement tracker. So you can, instead of checking your achievements, you can actually just track a, a crosshair and then enable that on and off to turn off your crosshair for different classes if you want it on and off. So uh, I like to keep my, I don't use a HUD crosshair anymore. I used to use it, but uh, if you do want to use it, that's what that command is for. Then I have my uh, weapon switcher is what I'd call it. Basically, when I pull out different weapons, I want to use different commands that uh, you can change your crosshairs, you can enable view models, etc, etc. So uh, it's another alias again, alias weapon one, pulls out my slot one weapon, it execs my default crosshair hide config, and then MW1, which I'll explain. Uh, again, weapon two, pulls out my slot two, execs default cross crosshair hide, and then MW2, and Weapon 3 execs default crosshair.cfg. So default crosshair hide is just a default crosshair, but with our draw view model 0. And then default crosshair is the same exact config, but with the draw view model turned to on. So I can see my melee weapon. I like to see my melee weapon for timing the swings, but for the other weapons, I don't care to see it. Then I have my binds. I bind 1 through 3 through my for my weapons. And then Q is my Q switcher. And a Q switcher is, normally when you hit Q, it'll pull up the last weapon that you had out, but my Q switcher only switches between my slot 1 and slot 2. I, I typically don't pull out the melee weapon if I want to pull it out I hit 3, otherwise I use my Q switch only between slot 1 and slot 2, and that's why the MW1 and MW2 is there for this uh, Q switcher aliasing. Then I have common binds, where I have uh, things like my loadout switcher, um, you know, turning closed captions off. You can read through it, my null, my null movement script, etc, etc. So that's my default config that I have for pretty much every single one of my classes, except for, um, let's see, like you'll see some exceptions here and there. For example, sniper, I like to use a dot as my crosshair instead of the plus sign because it's just a lot easier when it's a dot. Or uh, for spy, you know, I have uh, different disguise binds that I like or on uh, engineer you know you have extra binds for the uh, for the build menus and then for soldier uh, very specifically I don't use my lazy jump uh, script the last one that you'll want to look at is medic medic is the most complicated one because I like to have a lot of different custom settings here, and I'll explain through how each one of these works. So it starts out with weapon 2, weapon 2. This ensures that every time I spawn as a medic, it automatically pulls out my metagun rather than my slot 1 weapon. Uh, you typically don't want to have your slot 1 weapon out when you're in spawn, so just pulling out your metagun first is easy. Uh, then I have an uber bind. So this one pulls out my slot 2, it drops the briefcase, it uses a random voice command to mask the fact that I used uber. And then when I let go of it, it also uses Uber once again, and then says to my team in chat that I've Ubered. 
I also have some other funny binds that I had that I used to use. I don't use these anymore. Uh, then I have my my custom crosshairs, my Q switching, my uh, my loadout switchers. These are specific for medics. So when I use F1, it'll tell my team that I'm on Uber. Or when I use F2 or F3, it'll tell my team that I'm on Crits Creek or Quick Fix. Uh, a random voice script. So this one just spits out random voice commands. My radar script. This one actually is pretty cool. It abuses the auto calling. So basically, you turn the auto calling threshold. You you just manipulate that to have all of your teammates around you call out for medic, and then you can e instantly know where all of your teammates are around you. Pretty cool. So uh, the default threshold I set at fifty percent, and then so my, my teammates will all automatically call for medic at fifty percent or lower, and then I can hold my bind F and it'll set the threshold temporarily to 150%. And because no one ever maintains 150% health, it'll just instantly call where all my teammates are, and then I can let go of F and then take off the radar. So a pretty cool bind. And then the rest of the stuff is just some uh, key specific uh, voice commands that I like to use for Medic. And I've explained how to use those in another video called Masking Uber. Uh, pretty much all the rest of these CFG files are useless and don't mean anything anymore. I had like one for XTV that was specifically for XTV casts. Uh, the one that I use nowadays for demo review is Spectator 3. This one has some, basically enables the uh, the add-ons that I had earlier, and it makes it so I can look through, uh, see the players through walls, and it also puts on custom nameplates. It but it changes my arrow keys so that way I can manipulate the speed of the demo as it's playing back. And then it also puts on a default crosshair. I think that's about it. Oh yeah, bind R to pause the demo, bind T to resume the demo. Uh, you can look through all my configs if you want and see how I use them. I, those are pretty much all the configs that I actually use. The other ones are very useless. I don't use them at all. I just haven't cleaned up my, my config folder. Okay, that pretty much res resolves everything. If you're looking for that custom crosshair thing that I was talking about earlier, you can go under resource UI and then HUD Achievement Tracker Item and play around with this. You set HUD Achievement Tracker Item to 1, I believe. Uh, let me double check under config default crosshair hide. Nope, default config. HUD Achievement underscore HUD underscore Achievement underscore Tracker. Set that to 1 if you want to use it. And basically, you can make a custom crosshair using HUD commands so you can like have outlined crosshairs and some pretty cool effects check around on the internet uh, and see what's good and unfortunately when it comes to making your own config there's not a lot of resources online in terms of how to learn how to use commands and how to create a config that's fitting for you it's mostly comes down to trial and error I highly recommend that you just download my config take a look at how I use the commands and most of it's self-explanatory if you have any questions at all put them in the comments below as always and I'll answer them and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this video hope this makes more sense out of my configs folder and uh, yeah see you on my stream thanks for watching